Um, I'm very pleased to introduce the University of the um, Western Cape, one of our partner institutions, and they are talking about Kumalela at UWC, connecting students for a brighter future, which I think follows on very well from um, the keynote speaker. And the panel uh, of speakers here will be led by Sue Pather, who is the institutional lead, and she will introduce her three colleagues. So, um, Sue, if you'd like to. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. I think, uh, Jenny, I hope it's not in any kind of particular order that we came first, right? I'm not going. I'm not going. Thanks. OK. Um, yeah, let's see. We're, oh, let me start with our title. UWC, uh, looking at Fumalela at UWC, connecting students for a brighter future. With all the load shedding that we've been having, I thought this would be an ideal kind of topic to uh, work with. And as we go through our presentation, you can see the solar panels, the generators, the candles that was used to support the students on the way. So, on. so uh, yeah. So I just want to apologize. My uh, uh, VC, our uh, Vice Chancellor, Prof. Victorious couldn't make it, he's ill. So we managed to get a, a video a clip of him, which I will start off with that. And then I would go through our U UWC institutional operation, operating plan and how it's aligned to the CFU Malela outcomes. Then I, I would look at UWC priority outcomes and then we'll have the student voice after that. So um, I think, I think you guys. A very good day to all conference attendees. My name is Tyrone Victorious and I'm the Rector and the Vice Chancellor of the University of the Western Cape, UWC. UWC is represented at this uh, conference this year by our institutional lead, uh, Professor Sue Packer. Uh, our newly appointed BBC Student Development and Support, uh, Professor Matete Madiba, and Bradley Kumalo, our student representative. UWC joined uh, the CF Malela partnership in the second cycle in 2020 at a very difficult time, and we all know about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Much of our initial activities that we had planned had to be adjusted as we moved online. Although we faced many challenges, there were also many successes that we are very proud of. The aim of UWC CFU Mandela Student Success Project is to enhance the use of data analytics in the development of evidence-driven student success initiatives. Furthermore, it aims to invest in resources to support targeted interventions and approaches that have the potential to make a demonstrable differences. Our objectives, as outlined in UWC's proposal, are threefold. Strengthen the university's business intelligence capacity and analytical capabilities. Secondly, using learning analytics to enhance student support interventions, be it academic or psychosocial interventions, and thirdly, holistic support interventions for high-priority at-risk modules. In initiatives in all three areas have gone past the implementation stage. We are at a point where we have included monitoring and evaluating our actions, which is an important part of the process to pause and to relook at our interventions. Although our CFU Malela partnership ends in June this year, we know for sure that this is not the end for many projects that have evolved and grown 
due to the sea, sea of Pumalela Pandi. For example, the Data Analytics Working Group will continue with its work and so will the first year transition program. The Mental Health and Wellbeing pro program will continue, academic advising will continue and support to students and staff in the high priority modules project. At UWC we established the CEO Kumalera Student Success Committee in 2020, which is a subcommittee of our Senate Academic Planning Committee. The work in the subcommittee will continue. Being part of the CIA Kumalela partnership has brought about two important practices at UWC. Firstly, using data responsibly to inform our practice and secondly, working collaboratively across units and departments to place student success at the center of our academic project. The CIA Kumalela partnership has placed us on a strong path with regard to student success. Let me wish all attendees well in their participation in this conference. It's a good network opportunity and make good use of this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think we can stop our presentation. <laughs> our, uh, Vice Chancellor has mentioned everything that we want to do, but anyway, let's go. <laughs> So looking at our uh, strategic goals, our institutional strategic goals and how we wanted to align the Sia Pumalela outcomes with that, it speaks to two goals in our uh, institutional operating plan, our IOP plan. Goal one, which refers to student experience, and we uh, highlighted the points of addressing barriers to success and optimal support services. And our goal two, which is learning and teaching, in that area, we highlighted support of student success and uh, retention. So with that, we identified three areas, the three uh, sub-areas that we wanted to work on. And in these areas, we actually have institutional leads that have taken on those projects in strengthening uh, the university business intelligence capacity. Uh, Elizabeth Boy from our uh, BI unit took over that project and uh, held uh, held that project together. Using learning ad analytics to enhance student support interventions, we have two areas looking at academic area, which I take the lead in, and the second part looking at psychosocial. We have uh, Letitia Permo, who's going to chat to you, has taken the lead in that one. And then finally we have uh, Dr. Brown, who's not here with us, but she took the lead on high priority modules. We actually changed that name, previously it was called killer modules and address modules. So we thought we needed to change to a more positive uh, uh, title, so we changed to high priority modules because anything that's priority is important. And uh, so those lecturers feel much better about their uh, modules being called high priority than killer modules. <laughs> so I'm gonna call Elizabeth Boyd, who's going to just talk to you about what we've done over the past three years and how we've shifted the needle with regards to data and analytics. Yeah. Um, sorry, it's on. <laughs> to save time, I decided to do sit down. Um, that's me, Elizabeth Boy. Uh, I'm going to talk, tell you about the work that we've been doing under the sub project um, building the BI or business intelligence capabilities. Um, our achievement is started when we formalized the data working group and this is a an open group which has more than 25 members we meet bi-weekly to discuss data we did a benchmarking with up and i can see john claude um, and we learned from their experiences in terms of what they've been doing with the data hence we also started the data working group and this group reflects mainly on the data and then putting within the institution with the aim to strengthen the use of data to support decision making, especially when it comes to student success. And there are presentations today, two of them. One is on the student's thermometer, 
and predictive, it's a predictive analytics on the qualitative data, and Prof. Skida will be leading that. It's, everything happens in the Galapi. The other one, it's the, uh, the data analytics working group. We're going to share our experiences there in more details than what we're going to be sharing now. Uh, with the data analytics uh, working group as well, we discuss robustly the data that supports the faculty and the support and the support department. We also aim to do a lot of, or we not aim, but we do a lot of um, workshops and training in terms of the data uh, reporting and also in terms of the analysis. We are aiming to hold a data colloquium this year to showcase the work that we have been doing at UWC. Part of the work that we've been doing, we've also analyzed and saw the gap that we need to develop a data literacy that looks at skills and competency base so that we can achieve um, the greater good in terms of the use of data within our institution. We are currently having stakeholder engagement in terms of the use of data policy throughout the university. And after that, it, we aim for it to be approved and it becomes our Bible. I'm going to hand over to Latish. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so when we speak about holistic student success, um, I think what's been important for us at UWC is to ensure that student development and support as a division works closely with our data analytics team as well as um, our learning and teaching team um, and, and that so that we are quite intentional about creating an environment where we shift from the old deficit approach um, towards a more proactive and responsive approach and as Elizabeth has said one of the um, key um, tools that we've developed is a student thermometer um, but our work is grounded on three principles within uh, student development and support and as part of um, Pumalela at UWC and that is the fact that we, we want to shift to a more responsive approach. We want to embrace the fact that students are co-constructors of their success and we want to ensure that students take agency. And so whilst we are intentional about creating an environment that um, you know, espouses a culture of care, where mental health um, as part of one of our key projects is um, creating a culture of care within the institution, we have completed um, and have a policy that's been approved and now we are in the process of developing a mental health and wellness implementation plan across the university where we work very closely with all faculties to have faculty specific um, mental health and wellness implementation plans and we're taking that online as well so that we amplify the student voice using student mental health ambassadors in a project, um, a co-project of uh, Pumalela at UWC called Hear My Voice. And so I think within that context we also realize the value of one of our low hanging fruits and that is having students as peers to support other students really um, have been that we're getting quite excited about the collaborations across the university and I think this is testimony to that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leticia. I'm going to speak about our FYE and academic advising program. Both these programs actually is data driven and uh, specifically if you look at our first year experience. Uh, prior to students coming into the university, at the beginning of the year when they have, get their acceptance letter, we usually send out a link for our um, e expectation survey, first year expectation survey. We try to capture their expectations prior to them having any kind of influence of being on campus. 
and then at a later stage, at the end of term one, we send out our experience survey and then we do a gap analysis between expectation and experience. And what we realize is in the expectation survey, I think they're so excited when they get the acceptance letter, they take, yes, I'm going to make a lot of friends, I'm going to visit my lecturer many times, I'm going to go to the library, I'm going to do all these things. And after the one term, and we do the experience survey, many of these things have not been done. They just don't have the time, they can't manage their time, they're scared of their lecturer, they don't have that uh, uh, skills to go and ask for help. So what we did notice in that survey is a lot of them depended on their friends and peers for information. And therefore we thought we needed to strengthen the mentorship program and having peer mentors to support them because if they're going to go to their peers for the information, we have to make sure that the peers has the right information. So although hearing it to the grapevine, that's the theme we use, but we want you to have that correct information when they do go to their peers. So we have a mentoring constellation because mentoring previously was in silos, each one doing their own, but now bringing all the different services together so that mentor can help them in academic, psychosocial or whatever area they want to. So that's how we came up with our first year transition program. We support them during orientation and then the mentorship program is throughout the year and then once again we have the chatbot. The chatbot came about with all the queries and questions that students were asking over the years. We built it up and then we have a chatbot so they can go there and look at uh, some of the responses, some of the questions they have, the answers are there. Um, I can see five minutes. <laughs> okay, our formalized academic advising program, we want to thank UFS for training our academic advisors. I think we've had over 27 of them trained at the moment. We uh, uh, started a, a working group, 30, 35 uh, members made up of students, academic staff from across all different areas came together to talk about what does academic advising mean and what is academic advising in the UWC context. So it's only last year that we started this off. We had a brainstorming session and we came up with, we don't want to call them academic advisors because as soon as we do that, immediately the uh, perception in lecturers and students' mind is it's curriculum advising which is totally different. So we changed the name and we call them uh, Student Success Advising uh, Committee. So they are student success advisors and not academic advisors. So it gives it more a holistic feel. So we're excited uh, about that. And then we're using the learner case management system, which is fairly new for us. Elizabeth Boy has been training. We've appointed five academic advisors and we've decided to do a central uh, unit where the five will support the whole institution and then later on as we get better at this with the support of UFS, <laughs> we hope to then uh, go out into faculties as well. I'm going to stop there quickly and give our student Bradley a chance to talk and we're very excited. We brought Bradley as the student voice and we placed him in the data analytics team because we felt when we bring up the data, the student data, it's best to have a student to help us interpret student uh, uh, experiences and student voices. So Bradley's going to share his experience. Okay, um, so thank you for, for, for the opportunity. Um, everyone is saying everything from their heads. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm really quite thrilled to share my experience um, with you working on you know, this fascinating uh, collaborative project. And I was involved in providing some data analysis. Now, my role and aim were to analyze student experience survey data and de you, you, you know, determine how we could make our first year students um, journey uh, much better than it already is. And, and, and these are two of some of the most in, interesting things to me, and that's the data, and the second thing, um, student success. Really trying to apply CF Mandela services as shown earlier. So the data we worked on came directly from the students. Um, it was um, student experience surveys, and we had to try and make sense of the data build some analysis, um, clean it up, um, and you know, all, all these things that um, data people do. Now, you, uh, to use Ronald Koss's words, Ronald Koss um, is an economist, 
He says, uh, well, I'm going to say, the longer I interrogated the data, the more it confessed. And so as a student <laughs> leading, as a student leading these discussions in our student success committee, was quite challenging, but at the same time interesting. The data sparked lively debates and brainstorming sessions. And I think one of the biggest achievements really was witnessing the development of a first year experience program using these insights. So the data made it clear that the first year students were overwhelmed and struggling with quite a lot of time management issues. And that is very true of myself. Um, I can share um, with, with those experiences and a couple of other social issues as well. So I could definitely relate to that. And really reflecting on this entire process, um, my student experience as part of the student success uh, committee, I must say, I am both humbled and grateful for the opportunities and learnings. I have learned so much and it's not just about the data analysis, but also about the transformative um, role that data can play in higher education and in student success. It is amazing, absolutely amazing how a bunch of numbers and passion, which is really my one of my passions, um, so numbers and figures can lead to a positive and powerful change at UWC, which is my other love, by the way. It is also amazing how collaborative exercises between me and a student and various student success champions can yield such positive outcomes. This project was not just a stepping stone for my academic career, um, but also for my um, career as a whole, not just the academic learning journey, rather. Um, and I must say thank you to the team, and um, I must also say thank you very much to Elizabeth Boy, who played um, quite a pivotal role in being my um, data mentor. Thank you very much. So thank you, colleagues. We had a few uh, voices that we wanted to share, uh, our student voices, but we really don't have the time. They couldn't be here, but they had sent uh, TikTok messages and voice notes, but maybe we can watch it another time. So thank you very much for your time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got about four minutes. So if there are some questions in the room, such wonderful students who <laughs> are so enthusiastic about our universities and participating in student success. There's a hand over there. Um, did you have a question? Oh, he's, bringing you, he's bringing you the mic there, thanks. Um, thank you. I just want to um, accommodate you on the, the notion of the student being part of the team, which I really think is, um, is, is so good because then the student can see the whole project from the start to finish, where in some cases we, we get the student surveys or we get them involved and they don't never get that feedback or they're not part of the, the change eventually. So I just want to accommodate you on that. I think it's good practice. Yes, thank you. One more question. Well, you now know all of their faces and you can follow up with any of them. Uh, Alan? I just want to say thank you for your presentation to show what you have done for these three years. Basically. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. So let's give them a big hand. And <laughs>